In this video, I'm going to be showing you one of the more advanced features of Excel and something that comes up with a fair amount of frequency in investment banking and private equity, and that's how to record your own macros and then how to use other macros that have already been recorded for you, either by other people, by others within your bank, or anything that comes pre-installed with Excel as well. So first off, the concept of a macro. Some people aren't quite familiar with it, so I'm going to go over it right now. So basically a macro lets you perform a set of actions in Excel once and then record it and then lets you repeat it over and over again. So a simple example of a macro in Excel is just the F4 key. And we saw before how, let's say we were deleting rows, for example, we pressed, we highlighted the row with shift spacebar and then pressed alt E D. And then if we press F4, we would repeat that action. I'm just going to undo those right now. So in that case, pressing F4 lets us repeat simple actions like deleting rows, changing the font color, changing the font size, making it bold or unbold, things like that. So a macro is sort of like F4, except we can perform a more complex set of actions when we're entering macros, and that's why we use them. Now, in investment banking, probably the most common way that you use macros is for formatting. And you can probably understand why, just thinking about some of the formatting stuff that we went over before, where typically to format something like the headers at the top of a table, you'd have to press Control-1, go into Font, change the color here, go to Border, change that, go to Fill, change that, and then maybe even go to Alignment and change that as well. So you have to perform a fairly intricate set of actions every time you do this. And Potentially, you could just press Control C and then Alt EST to paste styles like I just did there. So that would be one way you could do it. But you also have to get everything set up in the first place. And often, if you don't have an existing spreadsheet or you're working off a really huge model or something, it's just more practical to have preset styles and to have shortcut keys that will allow you to get to everything. So that's probably the most common way that you use macros in Excel for finance anyway. And in a lot of cases, when you start working at your bank, you'll already have a set of macros installed with Excel. So every time you open Excel, you'll have a set of macros, and you just have to memorize the shortcut keys for those in order to get all your formatting, your colors, your fonts changed. There are also some third-party packages that are very commonly used at banks, and you may have one of those as well. But in this video, I'm not going to focus on those because it's impossible to know what you're going to get when you start working. I'm just going to focus on how you can create your own macro and then how you can view macros that have already been created. So let's start with a very simple example here. And for this example, I'm just going to create a macro that lets us delete a row. So very simple, very straightforward, but nevertheless, a good example to go through because it teaches you how to do this. So to get to the dialog to create a macro, in Excel 2003 and 2007, I can press Alt-T-M-R, which brings up this Record Macro dialog box. So it works regardless of which version of Excel I'm using. Now, if I were using Excel 2007, like I am now, then I could also press Alt-W-M-R, and that would take me to the same dialog box. But again, Alt-T-M-R works in both Excel 2003 and 2007, so that's what I'm going to use here. So Alt-T-M-R... And then we'll just leave the macro name as macro1 for now. For the shortcut key, we can go with a couple different options here. Typically, the best bet for shortcut keys for something like this is to keep it very simple. So we have control. We can just call this R for delete row. So we remember it. So control shift R. And the reason that the shift key came up there is because we entered a uppercase R. If we just entered lowercase R, then the shortcut key would just be control R. So we have a couple different options. We'll just enter uppercase R to keep it straight. And this is actually good practice with macros because a lot of built-in Excel shortcuts may already have control letter key combinations. So it's a good idea to do control shift and then use the letter that you want there. And then for store macro in, so we have a couple different options here. We could just store it in this one workbook. We could create a new workbook, a new Excel file for storing it. We could uh, store it in our own personal macro workbook. With macros, you could do it a couple of different ways. Sometimes when you start working at a bank, 
they'll have their own set of macros and that would be like storing it in your own personal macro workbook because it's just a file that you open that opens automatically whenever Excel opens. So that's one way you could do it. But for this example, we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to say store it in this workbook for now. We don't even worry about a description because this is so simple. Then I'll press tab a few more times to get down to OK here at the bottom. I'll press enter. Okay, and now I will just press shift spacebar and then alt E D and then I'm going to stop recording right now. So I'll press alt T M R once again. So now we've just recorded our first macro and you know, the macro is recording because at the bottom of the screen right here where it says no macros are currently recording. If one's recording, then it changes to the square button that used to be there. And if we can, if we click this with the mouse, then it would change and we'd start recording a macro. So that's how you can tell if one's being recorded. Now to view the macros that you can, you can go to alt T M M and this gives you a list and you see the names you can go to edit by pressing alt E and this is actually getting into visual basic code, which I'm not going to cover here because you don't really use visual basic at all with Excel, at least in investment banking and finance. But you can see that the code here is very set. And you can see that it's basically telling Excel to select a certain number of rows to activate a certain range and then to delete the selection that you have. So you can kind of just go in there and check that your macro recorded correctly. I'm going to go back to looking at the macro. So alt T M M to view the macros. Then I'm going to go to options right here. So alt O and that's where we can change the shortcut key and the description for it. Of course, we can change the macro name by pressing alt M up there. And here you see macros in. So we have a couple different options here. We can go to all open workbooks, just this workbook, just this worksheet. So those are a couple different ways that we can just look at the different macros available to us right here. The step into command is more useful if you've set up something really complex, you're using visual basic code and you're trying to figure out what's going on. I'm not going to cover it here because you don't really use it at all in investment banking, but that's how you'd view the macros. And then if you're using Excel 2007, you can also press alt W M V to view macros there and takes you to the same dialog box. I just prefer using alt T M M because it works in both versions of Excel. So it's easy to remember, but it's up to you what you use. Okay. So now let's go in and actually try pressing the macro key that we entered before. So press control shift R and we see that the row has been deleted. Control shift R here and notice how actually what's happening each time is that we're deleting the fourth row of whatever, whatever is in our sheet. Basically what the macro is doing is it always skips to the fourth row because that's what we told it to do. That's the row we were in when we first deleted it. And if we look under macros, I'm going to press alt W M and then you see this use relative reference option right here. So this is unchecked right now, but you see the description. For example, if you record a macro in cell a one, which moves the cursor to a three with this option on running the resulting macro in cell J six would move the cursor to J eight. So, if we wanted a macro that, for example, always went down two rows regardless of where we were, and then after it went down two rows, deleted the row that we were on, then we would have use relative references checked, and we'd press Alt W M U to get to that in Excel 2007. So that's just something else to keep in mind when you're going through it. We hardly ever use this in investment banking because most of the macros that you'll see are for formatting rather than for data manipulation. It can actually be a little dangerous to be using macros to manipulate data and to shift around rows, columns, and worksheets because the results can be unpredictable. And in general, it's just a better practice to be using macros for formatting if you can avoid using them for other things. And then one other important point to make with macros is that after you've enabled them and made your actions, performed your actions with your macro, you cannot undo what you've done before. So here, for example, if you have your worksheet open and you try pressing control Z several times, you'll see it doesn't work at all. It basically just gives you a beep sound for the error message in Excel and you, you can't undo what you've done. And this is something that's very important to keep in mind when you're using macros like this in Excel, even if you're just using them for formatting, 
it's really important to keep this in mind because you could find yourself in a situation where you delete a lot of rows and then save the file or delete some data, change things around, save the file. And if that happens and you've been using macros and you want to get back to it, then there's no easy way to do that. The reason why you can't use undo and redo with macros is that typically the actions are very complex. And so by default, Excel assumes that if it's you know a 20 or 25 step process that it's going to be fairly complex to actually undo it and there's no automated way to tell Excel how to actually undo your action really all you could do is set up a macro that does the opposite of whatever it is you did so for formatting you can set up some kind of macro that changes it back to the default but for data manipulation you can't really do that when you've deleted rows or columns or move things around so do keep that in mind when you're using macros that you can't undo and redo what you've done so be very careful before you do anything always save your file before you start to make big changes like that and just keep it in mind as you're going through and actually using macros in excel so now let me close this file and open up a fresh version so i can show you the exercise for this part Okay, so here's the original version of the file. And now I'm going to show you what I want you to do for the exercise with recording your own macro. I'm going to do it the first time. And a lot of this is going to be a review from what we learned in formatting and what I just went through now with setting up and recording macros. And then once I've done it, give it a shot yourself. If you get stuck, just unpause the video and then I'll go through it and give you all the shortcuts this time. So for this one, we're going to make a macro to properly display our headers at the top of this table. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do to record the macro now. Get into the record macro box. With the shortcut key, I'm going to use M here. On, I'm just going to store this in this workbook for now. Press tab to get down, then get down to the OK down here. Now it's recording, so I'm going to go into the format cells dialog. And first I will go to alignment. That's already set to center, but I'll set it again just to make sure. I'm going to go to font. And for color, I'm just going to go to the white here. For font style, enter bold. Go to border, and I'm just going to enter an underline border for this. And then I'm going to go to fill up here at the top. I'll select this blue color once again. Now I'll stop recording. Okay, so that's how I recorded a simple macro to take care of the formatting for this top cell. Now let's go over and see if this actually works. So I'll press Control Shift M, Control Shift M. I can highlight this whole area actually and just press Control Shift M. And we see that the formatting is working as intended and our first simple macro is set up and running. So that's how we do that. So now pause this video and give it a shot yourself using the steps that I just showed you. And then if you get stuck or you want to check your work, just unpause the video. And then this time I'll walk you through it by giving you all the shortcut keys this time. Okay, good. So once again, I can't actually undo what I've done here, so I'm just going to close this file and then open a fresh version. Let me just look and make sure. Okay, so we have no macro stored right now. Okay, so here's what we do to record the macro that I just went over. So to get to the record macro dialog box, press Alt T M R. We can just keep this macro name as macro4. It doesn't really matter what it is here. The shortcut key will be control shift m So I enter Shift and then the M key for uppercase M there. So it changes to control shift m Store macro in is fine. I press Tab to get down there. I press Tab to get the description and then Tab to get to OK. And that's it. So now it's recording, as you can see at the bottom of the screen right here. Press Control-1 to get into Format Cells, A to get to Alignment, Alt-H for Horizontal. I'll keep Center selected right here, but I could skip between them with the arrow keys. Press Tab a couple times to 
get to the top here. I can actually also use the mouse here. It doesn't really matter that much because usually you're only changing formatting once and it's actually faster to get to the top by just using the mouse rather than hitting tab repeatedly. I can press F to get to font and for the font style, press Alt O to get there. I'll change that to bold. For the color, Alt C and I'll use the mouse to select white. Press tab a couple more times, B to get to border, Alt B for bottom border, press tab a few more times, and then I'll press F to get to fill. And I will select this blue color right here for the fill. And I'll use I'll do this by using the mouse. And then I'll press Alt T M R to end the recording. Okay, so that is basically how you set up a simple macro to do the formatting for your headers of tables, data tables like this, and customer data in Excel. Now let's just look at this and view the macro to make sure everything looks right. So I'll press Alt T M M to look at the different macros. And I can go to Alt O here for options. We see it's set to Control Shift M just like we wanted. And I can also just press Alt E here to go to edit. If you don't know Visual Basic, then this code probably doesn't make too much sense to you. But it's a good idea just to look at this sometimes, just to make sure that it, it, it looks correct, because you can sort of figure out what's going on. Selection.borders.linestyle. So some of this is straightforward to figure out. You can just look at this to make sure you recorded something at least correctly. So that can be a good idea, especially if you're working with a more complex macro. This one we recorded was pretty simple, but sometimes you run to ones that are significantly more complex than this. So it's a good idea to look at this and make sure that at least something was recorded correctly and that it's sort of what you're trying to do right here. And now let's just fill this across and make sure the same style is going all the way across. So I'll press shift control right arrow key to select this area and then control shift M to use the macro to get to apply the style to all these remaining cells right here. So that's how you set up and record your own macros in Excel. Again, very useful with formatting, not used quite as much with other areas, but there's a lot of potential here. And when you start working, you're going to start seeing a lot of different macros for different purposes. So it's just a good idea to get an understanding of the fundamentals and see how you can set up your own and then how to use other people's as well. In the next video, I'm going to be showing you the last topic I want to go over in Excel, which is how to set up your own custom keyboard shortcuts. So we're going to be going over that. And in that one, it actually differs quite significantly between Excel 2003 and Excel 2007. So I'm going to go over both of them, depending on which version of Excel you have, and show you the different ways that you can actually set up your own keyboard shortcuts in Excel. And it's a huge time saver. And again, a feature that actually a lot of people in finance don't even know about or don't fully use.